Jared Poland from Nosephoto.com, and this is your Broken Back Photo News Fix. This fix is brought to you by Squarespace. As you should know by now, I've been using Squarespace for JaredPoland.com for well over 10 years. 10 years! The reason I've been using Squarespace for my own personal portfolio for that long is simple, because I don't know coding and I have no desire to ever know coding and you don't need to know coding to use Squarespace. But more importantly, social media is not your main portfolio. Sending someone to your Instagram feed doesn't cut it all the time. You need your own website that you're in control of. You need a Squarespace. In fact, it took me less than five minutes to add this new Kyle Troop photo story to Jared Poland. Com. To get your 14 day free trial, head on over to squarespace.com slash photo. And if you decide that it's for you, use the code photo at checkout to get 10% off your first order. First up, Lexar has announced two new series of memory cards. The first is their Diamond CF Express Type B cards. And the second is their Gold Series CF Express Type A cards. Now these cards come with a pretty big claim from Lexar that they will be the world's fastest, at least it's something. They claim that the read speed for the Diamond Series will be 1900 megabytes a second, which is 150 megabytes faster than the Angelbird AV Pro cards, whoever they are. How dare you! And for the write speeds of the Diamond cards, you'll get 1700 megabytes a second, which is similar to most cards on the market. Yeah. Now their Gold Series CF Express A cards will promise up to 900 megabytes a second read speeds, and 800 write speeds. Sits there writing and writing. But Lexar goes on to clarify that sustained speeds are only promised at 400 megabytes a second. Look, I'm all for super fast read and write speeds, but what I really care about are my images. You're concerned about your image. As long as my images are being recorded reliably time and time again, I'll be happy. Your image will be safe with me. I don't need the card that claims to be the fastest, only to read the footnotes and get the real truth. You do have an ego, don't you? In fact, I think someone should come out with marketing that says, we may not be the fastest cards ever, but we're certainly the most reliable. Now there's no word on pricing as of now, but if I had to guess, I'd say expensive. You can't take a guess for another two hours. Next up, Sony has finally announced the update to the six-year-old 24-70 2.8 G introducing the Sony 24-70 2.8 G Master 2, which Sony wants you to know is not replacing the six-year-old lens I just mentioned. Right. I'm not sure who they're kidding with that statement as it's literally the 24-70 2.8 GM2. Ah, ah, Nonetheless, ah. I've had this lens for quite some time and got to take it out into the real world to the Philadelphia Phillies game to test it out. Now you might be thinking that this is not the ideal lens to take out to a baseball game and you'd be right because it's really not. Why did you do it? But being that I have field access during BP and can get closer to the players, it was the perfect place to test it out. This lens is super light, super fast focusing and built extremely well as you would expect. Sony claims this is the smallest and lightest 24 to 70 2.8 ever, weighing in at 1.5 pounds or 695 grams. It's also 22% lighter than the original version. Sony did a great job with the switches on this lens. You could change a switch to go from smooth to tight zooming, click or de-click of the aperture ring, as well as locking that ring in place, which is something I've always asked for. The images I got with this lens paired with the Sony A1 really pop. The colors, the clarity, the accuracy are all fantastic as to be expected, especially if it's priced at $2,299 US and 12 billion Canadian dollars. Uh, you guys are dick. If you're a pro with an A1 who owns the version one, dump it, no questions asked, and get the version two. If you're not a pro and want to grab a 24 to 70 2.8, but do not have the cash, don't worry. Be happy. Grab the Sigma 24 to 70 2.8 for only 1,099 bucks, cause you'll be happy. To check out my review of the version 2, click the link down below to check out all of the images and what I was able to capture. And finally, Canon Rumors has made the claim that the EOS R7 will now be announced in Q4 of 2022. When will then be now? They also made a special note to say that they have confirmed the camera is in fact going to be called the R7. Other than that, they didn't have much to say, but I do. Now I know nothing about a potential R7. You know nothing. But I would like to gander a few guesses. The R7 will most likely bring the unification 
of mirrorless mounts. That sounds reasonable. The R7 will be the first in a line of crop sensor mirrorless RF mount cameras. That sounds prudent. Now this is all conjecture, I'm just making it up. So when I say will, I really mean like, I'm just making this shit up. I expect at the time that it's announced, you will see a handful of lower end RF lenses released as well. Sounds reasonable. Think something like an 18 to 55 kit lens and a 55 to 200 kit lens. How much is it? Now, I don't think the R7 will be priced as an entry level camera, but I do think it will basically be replacing the 90D and 7D style in the mirrorless world. Can I interest you in a change of pace? That means fast shooting, fast focusing, and built pretty well. I do think in the future we will see the introduction of a Rebel mirrorless, as that name holds a lot of weight around the world. Maybe they'll bring back Andre Agassi. I like change. But for now, I'm excited to see what an R7 might bring and if it will be priced right. The price is wrong, bitch. And there you have it. That's your photo news fix this time around. To check out the last fix, go ahead and click on the screen right here. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And that's where I'm going to leave it. Jared, polinfronosphoto.com. See ya.